Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Come along and visit with the Clampett family As they take you to their mansion in the hills of Beverly And when they do, you'll run into a friend of theirs you've met That good old friend with filter blend, Winston Cigarette Winston tastes good like a cigarette should The gypsy's warning, gentle lady, trust him not. Gentle lady, trust him not. A gentle lady, trust him not. Excuse me, Granny, I'm going to stores. Anything you need? I'll check my supplies. Why don't you string these beans? That's women's work. What did you say? I said stringing beans is women's work. It's anybody's work. I tell them to do it. Well, I ain't gonna do it. Gentle, that's the first time you've ever talked back to Granny. And it's the last. Now you go out and cut me a hickory switch and meet me in the woodshed. We ain't got no hickory tree. No woodshed neither. That's the truth, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, now, what'd you want to go and do that for? Stand up for your meals for the next few days. I want to string beans. I'll do it. Let's see what I got here. One deviled hawk eggs, two pickled pawpaws, three harmony grits, and one salted down hog jowls, one sack of salt, one sack of sugar, and one sack of dried beans, one skunk, one skunk. <laughs> I'm sorry, Granny. I'm gonna have to talk back to you again. Here, Charlie. <laughs> Ellie Mae, is Charlie a critter about this size with a white streak down his back? Here, Granny, you see me? He's in that cabinet over there. Now you go over there and get him out. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. He likes to crawl in dark places and snooze. Silly <laughs> me. I never said nothing when you drug home 14 dogs, three cats, a rooster, and a duck, and a baby lion, and a brace of goats. My dingies, I ain't gonna hold still for skunks. <laughs> Granny, you scaring him. What do you suppose he done to me? <laughs> I've looked at many a sack of beans. But it's the first one that ever looked back at me. <laughs> Sorry, Granny, but I got him to help old Duke. How's he gonna do that? Well, Pa says old Duke was a losing his smeller. He can't trail nothing no more. So I figured if he could sniff any trail, it'd be Charles. <laughs> yeah, your Pa's been quite worried here lately about old Duke's nose going bad on him. Smell that, Duke. Nice, big, fat rabbit. Come on, trail it. Trail it, don't you? Come on. Well, I think I know what you're gonna like. <laughs> Big sassy fox. Get him, boy. Come on. Come on, get him. Get him. Come on, boy. Get him. Come on, he's hiding in a hollow log here. Sniff him out, boy. Sniff him out. Come on, sniff him out. 
This will get action. A raccoon is your favorite. Come on, get him, boy. No, come on, get him, boy. Train him. Get him, boy. Get that old raccoon. Come on. Come on. He's kicking dirt in your face. You ain't gonna stand for that, are you? Sure is a pitiful thing, Duke. Have a nose that big and not have it working. Paul? Paul, is old Duke any better? Really, honey? There's a dog used to be able to trail a butterfly through a swamp after a rain. Now he couldn't smell cabbage cooking. I got something here I'll bet you can smell. <laughs> he won't do nothing, Paul. He likes me. Yeah, well, how's he feel about me? Charlie, this here's my Paul. Now you be nice to him. And this here is old Duke. You let him get a good whip, and then he's going to trail you. Now, Charlie, uh, it's all in fun. No hard feelings. Maybe he caught you cold, Paul, and got his nose stopped up. Either that or he just don't give a hoot. He looks worried. Well, to me, all hounds look worried. I have noticed him looking over at the Drysdale place every now and then, kind of whimpering. I bet you he misses Cotton Patch. Who? The white poodle Mrs. Drysdale brought over from France to marry up with her poodle. Oh, yeah. She's in the hospital. Been there a couple of weeks or so. I reckon that's why Duke's a piney. <laughs> Duke, you just have to get her off your mind. She belongs to somebody else. Oh, Duke, don't cry. Uncle Jed! Uncle Jed, look who was in the mailbox for you. Come all the way from Paris, France. For me? Says right on it, Monsieur J.D. Clampett. <laughs> hey, I'll bet you that's from that pretty French lady. The one who brought Cotton Patch over. Yeah, the one you was courting and sparking. What are you talking about courting and sparking? Well, you shave for her, and in the middle of the day. <laughs> you slick her down your hair with smell. Yeah, and you shined your shoes, and it weren't even Sunday. You <laughs> throw your swallowtail coat and your courting derby. And then you went right on over to eat. You two young and got some chores to do or something? No, Pop. Why don't you open that up and see what that pretty French lady sent you? Probably ain't from her at all. Probably just some catalog. From Paris, France? Really? Don't you go out and help Granny and take Charlie back where you found him. Jethro, you take Duke for a run through the hills. Do you both good. Well, where are you going, Uncle Jeff? You just take care of Duke, I'll take care of me. Jen wants me to take you for a run. <laughs> Duke, you can't run unless you get to your feet. Hey, come on, Duke, try to get both ends up at once. Jethro, run me over to Mr. Drydale Bank. Okay, Uncle Jeff. I can run you a heap easier than I can run old Duke. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I mean, run me down in a truck. Oh. Oh, all right, I'll go fetch it. <laughs> One of these days, I gotta have a long talk with that boy. Oh, oh uh, Chief, you, you told me to warn me if your wife came in. She's here? The doorman just called. Oh, well, tell her I've gone to Las Vegas to get some money. <laughs> she... Mabin! Uh, 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 Margaret. Claude has something to tell you. Uh, well, write me a letter, Claude. I'm very busy right now. <laughs> what day is it? Black Wednesday. It's homecoming day for your grandchildren. <laughs> My what? I talked to the doctor at the hospital, and he said Claude's wife and babies can come home today. Isn't it exciting? Aren't you thrilled? Beyond description. Claude is the father of quintuplets. Aren't you proud of him, Milburn? Margaret. It is not unusual for a dog litter to number 12 or even more. Why, 
Why must you always be little, Claude? You know how sensitive he is. Oh, I'm sorry, Claude. Good show. Congratulations. <laughs> now, I've got a lot of work to do, Margaret. You certainly have. We want you to help pick five baby names. Three boys and two girls. We want your suggestions. Well, my first suggestion is for you to go home and do it. I've got a bank to run. Bank, bank, bank. That's all your daddums talks about. <laughs> now, of course, the first boy should be Claude Jr. and the first girl should be Claude Ben. Claude wanted to name one of the boys after his daddums. But Milburn just doesn't sound French. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's all sit down and we can go over my list of names. Claude, you can lie down. Poor darling, he's a nervous wreck. He's chewed his nails right down to the paw. Well, I'm going to be doing a little nail chewing myself before this is over. This is exciting. <laughs> Mr. Clabbit, how nice to see you. I'll tell Mr. Drysdale you're here. Oh, no, no, please. Uh, it's you I come to see. I? Yes, ma'am. You see, uh, this comes from me in the mail. I think it's wrote in French. Would you... Uh... Is it translate? Oh, I'd be happy to. Sit down. Oh, Mademoiselle Denise. <laughs> she said she's going to send me a picture. Such a beautiful woman. So sweet and so charming. Funny thing about her, I couldn't understand a word she was saying, but I sure did like the way she was saying them. <laughs> Shall I read the letter to you? Yes, ma'am, but uh, not too loud. <laughs> Cher Monsieur Clampett, dear Mr. Clampett, here is the photograph I promised. I shall be coming to Beverly Hills again very soon now, and I hope that I may take one of you back to Paris with me. Well, I wonder which one of us she's going to take. Be treat for Granny. <laughs> no, Mr. Clamp, but she means a photograph of you. Oh, I don't think I got none. Leave that to me. It's easily arranged. <clears throat> I'll read on. Mrs. Drysdale has cabled me that Colette is expecting and has invited me to come and take my pick of the litter of puppies. <clears throat> I am looking forward to seeing you then. Sincere best wishes, your friend, Mademoiselle Denise Bouchard. Mm, doggy. Sure is handy to understand that foreign writing and talking. You reckon you could learn me? Well, well yeah. <laughs> yes, in time. Today? <laughs> I could give you a lesson at noon. How long would it take? Oh, an hour. Hour? That ain't bad. <laughs> oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll tell Mr. Drysdale and be right over. Thank you. It's going to be nice talking fern with you. How do you do? It is good to see you again. Thank you. I am fine. How do you do? It is good to see you again. <laughs> I am fun. Who are you talking to? <laughs> Bonjour, madame. Quel plaisir de vous voir. Merci beaucoup. Je vais bien. Oh, you're that French-speaking lady the Jed got all frizzled up over. <laughs> Come on in. Yeah, sure nice to see you again. Oh, oui. How do you do? It is... Just fine, thanks. How are you? How do you do? It is... Just fine, thank you. How are you? <laughs> How do you do? Uh, I don't know whether you uh, don't hear me or you don't believe me. Please, <laughs> you want me to... Oh, hi, ma'am. Nice to see you again. How are you? How do you do? Oh, just as frisky as a flea on a fat dog. Thank you. Don't do no good to tell her. She'll only ask you again. <laughs> How do you do? Eat, uh, see what I mean? <laughs> kind of rattle. Better take her out to the kitchen and give her some coffee. <laughs> oh, coffee. Bon. 
Well, I reckon she could scare you up a bone. But wouldn't you rather have a donut? How do you do? Get that coffee, quick. <laughs> Thank you, Jethro. Oh, Uncle Jed, can I see what you got from Paris? Oh, I reckon not, Jethro, besides wrote in French. Can you read French? Well, Miss Hathaway's coming over here to learn me. Now you pull the truck up out of the way. Ready? Jed, you got company. Who? That beautiful foreign lady that you were so sweet on from Paris. She here already? In the kitchen having coffee. Oh, God, another hour and I'd have had my French lesson. Where you going? Going up to wash my hand. <laughs> Howdy, Granny. Jethro, finish my sweeping. I gotta go someplace. Uh, no, ma'am, Granny. What? Sweeping is women's work. You go cut me a hickory switch and you wait for me. Granny, I told you before, there ain't no hickory switches nor woodsheds in Beverly Hills. No wonder they have to have policemen to watch the young'uns. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna bite on that one again. I'm too smart. <laughs> Is that a fact? Ma'am, well, Granny, Uncle Jed says it's because I go to school. <laughs> oh, you're much too smart for a poor old woman that ain't had no school in her nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Old granny. <laughs> hey, Uncle Jet, you done changed again in the middle of the day. <laughs> hey, young my granny, oh. come on in, see Uncle Jet. If your brain was as big as your mouth, you'd be teaching school instead of going to it. Oh, you done slithered your hair down again. And put smell them on it, too. It shines your shoes. Hey, you better be quieting down, Ellie, or you're going to get a mouthful of hat. <laughs> you clumpy. Oh, howdy there, Mr. Neese. You look as pretty as a bag full of striped candy. Je suis si content de vous revoir. Je pensais constamment à vous à Paris. Je souhaite que vous ayez reçu de mes nouvelles avec ma photographie. J'attendrai avec plaisir et impatience d'avoir votre signe de votre main et que je garderai toujours près de moi. Just my luck. Another hour and I'd have been able to understand every word she said. <laughs> Margaret, this was my den, and you said I could have it back. All right, dear. If you'd rather I add a new wing to the house. Ah, uh, never mind. I'll keep on using the basement. <laughs> Isn't it cunning? <laughs> Where are the puppies? They're with their mumsy wumsy. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't hire a baby nurse. Oh, I must speak to the poodle pediatrician about that. <laughs> Melbourne, this is going to be the most thrilling moment. Our first look at our first grandchildren. <laughs> Will you please stop calling them that? They are dogs. Now, let's have our look so I can get back to the bank. Oh, but wait, dear. Don't forget your mask. Right. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Oh! <laughs> it's that hillbilly beast. <laughs> Shoo! Scat! You mongrel! <laughs> Margaret, something tells me you closed that window a couple of months too late. What do you mean? To Claude. He's already in analysis. <laughs> <laughs> now, try again, Mr. Clampett. Bonjour, mon ami. Once more. Bonjour, mon ami. Good. Now, what does that mean? Uh, 
Open a window? No, that is ouvrir la fenêtre. The pen of my aunt. No, that is la plume de ma tante. Bonjour, mon ami, is good day, my friend. Oh, that's right. How long have we been at this French lesson? About 55 minutes. And you say it takes an hour? That's right. Well, them last five minutes must be doozies. <laughs> now let's take... Je t'aime. Je t'aime. Good. Now what does that mean? Well, let's see now. Uh, the pencil box? <laughs> Mr. Clapper, I love you. Well, uh, thank you, ma'am. But since we only got five minutes left, Maybe we'd better stick to business. <laughs> I think that uh, will be enough for today. Where is uh, Mademoiselle Denise? Oh, well, he may. He took her down to the seaman pond to meet her critter. Uh, bonjour, mon ami. Excellent, excellent. Uh, howdy, you furry little barman. <laughs> well, if that's French, we've been talking it for years. <laughs> I rather imagine she learned that from listening to Ellie May. Dad, Miss Drysdale's here, and she's squawking like a two-pound chicken laying a three-pound egg. <laughs> there you are, Mademoiselle Denise. You may take this wanton Jose back to the streets of Paris, where she belongs. <laughs> Poor Mrs. Drysdale. Milburn, show them why. <laughs> Monsieur Duke, je pensais que vous êtes le papa. <laughs> the Duke, there sure enough is a family resemblance. It is guilty as sin. Claude will be over later to demand satisfaction and to wreak vengeance on this mongrel. Well, if that means he's going to tangle with Duke here, I wouldn't recommend it. I've seen this old hound dog hold his own with a bobcat. And as we're calling him a mongrel, the bloodhound happens to have much more ancient lineage than the French poodle. Milton, are you going to tolerate this insult? Why not? I'm not a French poodle. <laughs> Miss Drysdale, does all this talking mean we can keep these here puppies? And this shameless canine coquette. Come, Milton. It's time for Claude, this tranquilizer. <laughs> Well, uh, Granny, I kind of figured that uh, Miss Denise being so far from home and all that uh, she might want to eat supper out at one of them French eating places. Well, good. If that's what she wants, let her go. <laughs> How many of us does that leave? Well, you don't understand. Uh, I'd be going with her. My cooking ain't good enough for you, huh? <laughs> oh, Granny, it ain't that. It's just uh, I'd like to spend a little time with her alone. Oh? Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> Uh, Miss Hathaway, would you please ask Miss Denise if she'd allow me to take her out for vittles? Certainly. Monsieur Clampet, voudrez-vous inviter à dîner? Enchanté, monsieur. Je serai charmé et honoré. Something tells me that meant yes. <laughs> You'll need an interpreter. Well, I, uh... Oh, Mr. Clampett, if you're thinking three's a crowd, you're right. But I have taken care of that. Jethro! Attendez! <laughs> hey, Uncle Jeff, Miss Jane says we's going to double date. Well, uh, that wasn't exactly the way I planned. Uh... Mr. Clampett, I told Jethro that if you went out tonight, it would be a double date. Oh, well, in that case, I can't let you break your promise. Uh, double date it'll be. <laughs> well, ma'am, we didn't talk much, but I can't remember when I've had a better time. How'd you like it? Well, Dougie. <laughs> How about you two in the back seat? You enjoy the double date? <laughs> Thank you.
seen anything but Winston cigarettes and bought two cartons this morning. Got them right here for you, Jed. <laughs> well, Granny, where is all the crushed proof boxes these Winston's come in? Well, Jed, I needed them. What for? For my yarbs and spices and things. <laughs> hey, Granny, the Winston folks make these crushed proof boxes special. Protect these fine tasting cigarettes of there. Well, they're good for protecting my yards and my spices, too. You can keep the jar, I'll trade you even. Granny, I can't go around carrying this jar full of Winston's in my pocket. You want me to make you a bigger pocket? No, I just want my Winston's back where they belong. I gotta say one thing about Winston's. Whether they come in a pack, a box, or a jar, them rascals taste good. Like a cigarette should. It do rhyme better. <laughs> the Beverly Hillbillies has been presented by Winston. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we hope you will try Winston. Because Winston tastes good, like a cigarette should. <laughs> Now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. And they would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. You all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.